Morning. I'm Vanessa Feltz. You can catch me here on BBC London every weekday morning between 9 and 12. And today, well, is it a joke? Is it funny? Is it unbelievably upsetting? Is it insulting? Are you offended? Can you believe that there could be all this fuss that a man's, as he says, political career uh, could be destroyed over just one Facebook share? Or do you take it very seriously indeed and think you don't think it's a joke? You don't think it was real? You think it was set up? You think it was racist? And you think uh, that anybody, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the word, anybody who did, well, I I won't use the word, anyone who thinks that this is something to share on Facebook deserves to have the political rug pulled from under them. Let's kick off with my guest, Mo Ansar, Islamic and social commentator. Hello, Mo. Good morning to you. Good morning, Vanessa. Have you had a chance to see this? I mean, I'm very wary of calling it a joke because I'm aware that lots of people won't think it's funny. But I'm also aware that some people probably will think it's funny. So I don't quite know what to say. So I'll, I'll leave it to you. You're the guest. What do you think? Um, you know, whether I think something is, is personally funny or offensive or not, the, the, the fact is that um, politicians have rules by which they need to abide by. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he, he's not a comedian. I mean, he may think he's a comedian. He may find himself, you know, very funny. We don't want to see a public space where people can't make jokes and they can't have fun. However, we saw this with the, with the Jesus and Mo cartoons a while back. Um, you know, the, the, the political parties have rules. And, and this Tory councillor... And, and, and I, I'm not sure that his political career is in shreds. My understanding is he's... Um, Suspended for a uh, year, but he says that the political rug has been pulled out from under him. Well, you know, politicians make all kinds of mistakes. And guess what? It, it's a hard life, isn't it, politics? You know, if you screw up, if you, if you make a mistake uh, and you're on the front benches, you know, maybe you'll, you'll have to resign your post. Maybe you'll have to take a back seat for a little while. But let me ask you whether this is a mistake. I mean, let's imagine he thinks it's funny. It's it's two black plastic bin liners standing in between them, what looks like a woman in a burqa, you can't even see her eyes, and a child in a burqa, which to me is unusual. I've never seen a child dressed like that uh, no. in London. Uh, in a row, just standing there in a street, and there's a sunshiny street with cars parked along one side, and you've heard the caption already. I said you have three beautiful children. Yeah. I didn't know she was going to get so ticked off. I'm using the word tick. That's not what it says. Um, it was an honest yeah. mistake. Now... I don't know what you think. I, I'm, I'm already beginning to, and I've only just been looking at it since this morning, but I'm already beginning to question that this was ever a bona fide picture. I think this is a setup. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I do think so. I, I, well, I mean, whether, whether it's a, whether it's a, you know, a bona fide picture or not, the, the point is, um, uh, I'm, I'm not convinced necessarily that it's a joke. I, I mean, I, I think there are lots of people out there who are sick and tired of hearing uh, prejudice masked behind, uh, firstly, uh, a, a political veil, if I can use that terminology. Mm. Um, I think people are sick and tired of being told that things which is offensive, which, which is prejudicial and which is bigoted, is being coined as banter. Having, um, having we, said we, all we of had... that, Mo, having said all that, and I'm treading carefully because I have no wish to offend anyone, that's not yeah, what this programme is about, it's not what I'm about, it's not what we're doing, that's not why we're talking about it. But there is no question that looking at it, because of the way it's structured and taken and everything else, and because you can't see the eyes of the two human beings in the picture, there is a slight similarity between the bin bags and the people. In other words, they're they're, they're sort of black figures, four of them in a row. Mm -hmm. You know... Look, it's horribly offensive. Look, look, look. look. Is it 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 horribly offensive? Philip Hollibone, I think there was an article in in March 2010, was referred to, um, I think it was referred to the police, Mm. But anyway, the, the Guardian reported on Philip Hollibone calling the face veil a paper bag. I mean, he, he said he considers it oppressive. He and, and he, I mean, he's sponsoring and drafted the um, the face coverings bill, which has had its second reading in the Commons and is coming back again in the summer. Now, now Philip Hollibone says, uh, I think he says he finds it um, he finds it oppressive, and he said, I don't believe that God intended for women to walk around covered from head to foot. I regard it as abhorrent. Mm-hmm. Now we have politicians. You know, main uh, you know, MPs who are in the Commons who have these views. And we have this culture of prejudice and of bigotry against Muslims. Sayyid Abbasi herself said that Islamophobia has passed the dinner table test. Now, at some point, um, you know, the better parts of our society are surely going to have to put their foot down and say, look, 
these things are unacceptable. Except, when, except when, I suppose when, when it comes... But, when it, when when, but hang on a second, Mo. When, yeah. when you talk about uh, um, comments made in the House of Commons, when you, make, when you talk about Jack Straw, for example, talking about one of his constituents who was veiled, we all remember that conversation. We talked about it a great deal on my programme. That's a politician yeah. making a serious comment, saying something, and, and you hope that politicians will be sincere. I mean, really, you hope if they believe in something, they will say it, even if you disagree with it. But they're saying something serious in a serious context, attempting, as you quite rightly say, to shape... Uh, um, to to shape, um, uh, you know, the way we feel, the way we think and the way our laws are, are, are structured. But a joke, and I use the word carefully, but a joke is surely a joke. You know, a joke come, is, come, a joke come is come not on, attempting Vanessa, to, say, often, to, to change Vanessa, anything how, or influence how, anything. Vanessa, how hmm. often have people, um, you know, been, been incredibly offensive, said hurtful, spiteful things, hmm. and then turned around and said it's a joke? What I'm talking about is underlying prejudice and bigotry and when it bubbles up to the surface and if this man is a politician and and, and he's in Enfield for goodness sakes I mean how how diverse is that part of North London you'll know as well as I will mm-hmm. right uh, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm from Watford originally which is um, let's, let's call it you know the, the right side of the A1 <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, you, you know th- th- these are very very diverse areas and, and I think you can't go around offending such a large part of your Constituencies. I just wanted to make the point. There was a councillor in Bournemouth who, mm. a couple of years ago, said um, it's only the English Defence League who stand up for English values, mm. right? Now she was suspended from the Tory Party as well. I, and I and I, I think we have to, albeit it's been slow, because I think Joe Anidis was was I think initially was reselected in May after he made the comment. So mm. they've been a bit slow to react, and the Lib Dems have been very slow to react over the margin of this issue. I mean, look, the, the Tory party have at least behaved eventually with some kind of common sense here by saying, look, these kind of comments are completely unacceptable in today's society and we cannot have politicians whipping up hate and hysteria and fueling the fire of, of uh, an ethnic but group isn't or minority there, but, group but, and or I, Jews or No, or I agree with every word you say. We cannot have politicians whipping up hate or hysteria. You're absolutely right. I don't believe anybody would disagree with you. You're quite but right. They, they, but but, what, if, but, what, but what if, though, but what if what they're really trying to do is raise a giggle? A weak one. It's not a hilarious picture. It's not going to have people creasing their sides. Nobody's going to be weak with laughter. It's not that kind of thing. But if they're just trying to say, isn't that funny? Funny picture. <laughs> don't you think it's funny? Yeah, is that, yeah, is, yeah. And that's not whipping up racial hysteria and hatred and prejudice. Or is it? Is it? No, but 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 Vanessa, mm. what, mus, Muslim kids in black bin liners, ha ha. I mean, it's not. I I don't find this funny at all, right? Right. Um, are, are you uh, offended I, I, by it? Do you find it offensive? Well, well, I am. I I am a bit, but I, but I I but I know for a fact that. I mean, I'm a bit offended. Let's put it that way. I mean, it's. It's not that we've got bigger fish to fry, let's be honest well, with you. Well, right? that's but the thing. Mo, Mo, I have to go, I'm afraid, but thank you so much for talking to us. We're taking your calls on this. You get the picture without... I'm, I'll describe it again to you if you like. It's a pretty straightforward picture. There are four black figures in a row, two are black bing bags. One is a Muslim lady in a burqa and one is a child in a burqa and they're all in a row. And, and it says, I said she had three beautiful children. She didn't have to get so beeping angry with me. It was an honest mistake. Ruth McKee, a reporter from the Enfield Advertiser. Hello, Ruth. Morning to you. Good morning, Vanessa. Obviously, a big story for the Enfield Advertiser, this one. Well, yes, and we have been covering it since, you know, this originally broke, which Mm. was over a year ago now. Mm. So for us, the big issue here is the fact that it's taken a year Mm. for it you know, central Conservative Party, the National Party, to take decisive action like this. Why do you think it has taken so long? Well, there's quite, from this end, from Enfield, there seems to be quite a lot of buck passing in some ways. In fairness, the Conservative group locally, the people, his bosses essentially here, immediately, as soon as this, they saw these printout documents suspended him, they had an investigation, they took away the Conservative whip from him in the council, so he's actually been sitting in council meetings as an independent councillor. Mm. The other issue is then they, there was also so a police investigation, this had actually been reported to the police mm. as a race-hate crime. Now, the police investigation only concluded just before Christmas. So there seems to be a sense of there was a series of bureaucratic things that they had to wait for. Mm-hmm. And the 
but it seems to me that the issue that triggered it yeah. was that he, Mr. Ioannidis was reselected to stand as a conserv well as a candidate yeah. in the local elections this May. His name was put on a short list that was sent up to the central office. Yeah. And it was only then that they realised, oh wait, Ioannidis, this flags and you know this flag something for us. Right. And so and so the view at the Enfield Advertiser is what that it's been an unwieldy and cumbersome path to to to, to reaching the right verdict or what? Well, yes, I mm. think that from. Obviously, we don't necessarily have an opinion on, you know, how this should have been handled. We've been covering it. But from our perspective, there has been a number of interesting developments, shall we say. The fact that he was reselected, the fact that, you know, he was put on a short list, mm. um, the fact that, you know, he was still... There, there seems to be quite a lot of uh, secrecy, or not secrecy, but it's not terribly transparent how the council themselves are dealing Is with it. Is it transparent who shopped him? Because somebody or other took a photograph of this shared picture on his Facebook page, didn't they? Well, that's... I'm not entirely sure how relevant that would be. Well, we just wondered how, because it's, it, it, it presumably is his personal Facebook page, isn't it? He thought he was sharing the picture with his personal friends, not with his political colleagues and constituents, well, but with his, on, with his mates, didn't we he? We have printouts of the pages. Yes. And on those printouts, he it's in his... Not, his bio mm. is not his personal bio. It's a councillor bio. Oh. He says, Chris Joannid is councillor at London Borough of Enfield. He goes on to say where he studied, you know. Um, and the issue here being that he was commenting in a professional public capacity. Uh-huh. We have the documents and there's references to council meetings, residence mm. meetings. Mm-hmm. So he is not from what we can tell from the documents in front of us, he is not hiding the fact that he is commenting as a councillor in the London Borough of N. Right, OK, so it's kind of a semi-official website, uh, Facebook page kind of thing. Well, yes. And, right. you know, from whenever we were looking at this, we had to ask ourselves, you know, what privacy protections he had put on this for himself. Mm. You know, you, you have to make a judgment and you have to say, right, has he made any attempts to make his name, spell his name differently, for example. Some right. teachers would do that on Facebook. Right. Or has he made, you know, has he put this up to the highest privacy setting? Has he, has he reduced the number of his friends right down to the only people who can see this are maybe acquaintances? And from the printouts we have, that would not appear to be the case. So right. From our perspective... I suppose it could say, that could indicate, you know, he thought it was funny, he thought everyone would think it was funny, he didn't think there was anything wrong with it, you know, he didn't think he had anything to hide. Well, yes, that's that's precisely the view that we came to yeah. after looking through this. And I think as well, speaking to Mr Ioannidis since then, because we've approached him for statements, and he's been happy to speak to us, and he has told us, mm. you know, oh, I'm not Islamophobic, I'm worried about fundamental, you know, mm. the, the usual justification, mm. saying that it was, that this was uh, purely, you know, what any right-thinking person would comment, mm. you know, which was... There there did not seem, and as well, he was saying that these were taken out of context. They were stitched together to form a different narrative. However, we have to say that the narrative that, you know, has been created through his own words, Mm -hmm. these are all his own words, is one of, you know, there are these images that Mm -hmm. he's commented on. There are also peppered throughout all the correspondence, there are references, derogatory references, to Turkish people, really, because oh, you see, all we're aware of here mm. uh, is the picture of the of the two bin bags and the two human beings, yeah. and the caption on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, not aware of anything else. Mm-hmm. Well, this is where it gets very politically difficult for the Conservatives in Enfield because right. Enfield has a very big Cypriot community. There are equal numbers of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots, Mm. and there are tensions between those communities. There is a danger that this will bring some of those tensions to the surface, because 
it has this these documents have now been widely circulated to enough people who have seen that Mr. Ioannidis, who is of Greek Cypriot origin, yeah. seems in the course of these documents yeah. to be in support of, you know, uh, he see you know he. He is, he, there's a printout in front of me where mm. he is an official like for the official page of Nico Sampson, who mm. was a um, you know a very hated coup figurehead, right. um, who is synonymous with you know people, with you know abuses against Turkish people in Cyprus. Oh, I see. So right. there is levels of this mm. that I'm sure Mr. Ioannidis would again you know write you know have the chance to defend himself over and, you know, in fact, dispute. But I think that's why the group locally acted so quickly. Mm. And they have been, ever since this time a year ago, they have been completely distanced from him. And I think that's the only thing that's going to protect the Conservative Party in Enfield. Right. Like locally, on a local level, because they... You've been a a phenomenal uh, reporter, Ruth. Thank you very much indeed.